Ugh, I've got too many bills. If you need funds, you can apply in minutes at cashnetusa.com and have the money in your account as soon as the same business day. Okay, got it. Applying now. They've been helping hardworking people cover emergency expenses since 2004. Hey, look, I got it. You've got this. When you need money fast, be the hero. All loans subject to lender approval. Speed of funding is subject to verifications and your bank's processing times. See cashnetusa.com for more details. This episode of the Kill by Kill podcast is brought to you in part by Paramount Pictures, A Quiet Place, day one, which you can bring home right now on digital. One of my favorite people, Lupita Nyong'o and Joseph Quinn from Stranger Things, they star in the film that critics say is packed with nail-biting tension and thrills. Your digital copy includes over 15 minutes of behind-the-scenes footage and deleted scenes and is available at participating retailers. Written directed by Michael Cernoski, buy A Quiet Place day one on digital today. Day, it's rated PG-13. And you don't have to stay quiet about it. Email us at killbykillpod at gmail.com with quiet in the subject line for your chance to win your own copy of A Quiet Place Day One. And now, the body count continues. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, dying time is here. That's right. We're talking about in a violent nature on Kill by Kill. Well, greetings and salutations, internet. It's your old pal Patrick Hamilton coming to you once again from the wilds of Canada. This is the Kill by Kill podcast, where we are dedicated to celebrating the least discussed component of any horror film the characters so we're going to unpack all the goriest details of 2024's in a violent nature in the hopes that a camper's untimely end is just the beginning of the jokes we can make at their expense and as always there's only one person i trust to make sure that if she's taken a cursed locket out of the forest that she'll at least leave it on the gas camp before she beats feet to Leave me get hacked to death. The one, the only, Gina Radcliffe. How are you doing today, Gina? Well, you, you kind of beat me to the punch. I was going to uh, um, ask you, if you're in the woods and you just yeah. find like a random like necklace just hanging on a branch, would you just grab that and just give it to Becky as a gift? No, no, <laughs> no. It's like, well, this is probably covered in tetanus. So I'm just going to leave this right. here. <laughs> like there's... A million reasons not to touch that and only one to pick it up and then give it to somebody else. You're rock stupid. Oh, yeah, yeah. I'll, I'll get to my, my, my theory on the characters in a little bit. Yeah. But yeah, definitely. Uh, this is an interesting one, I guess. Um, you know, we'll do a little non-spoiler up front and then get into the meat of it just in case somebody... Doesn't, I don't know that you can be spoiled for this uh, up front. Um, yeah, I mean, it's it's not like there's not a big twist over who the killer is or anything yeah. like that. Um, and we should also point out that uh, uh, this is an interesting because this is both still in theaters, but also mm-hmm. available for rent. And, and, yes. and, and it's coming the, soon to shutter. Right. And it's the, the reasonable rent cost. I think I paid like six bucks on it from Prime. Right. It's not because sometimes new movies, when they come to streaming, they're like 20 bucks. But yeah. yeah, so this is this is in theaters and on streaming. So if you haven't seen it yet, you can see it. You can watch it right now. Yes. Um, and it's a what I would call a genre exercise in 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 respectful terms, because it's coming at this from a, a very simple what if standpoint. What if you made a Friday the 13th where you didn't worry about putting on a show so much, right? You're not, you have all the accoutrement that comes with the Friday the 13th. Only you're, for the most part, locked in with Jason 
as he walks about, uh, you know, the woods and carries out a series of murders. Do you get character moments? You actually do. Um, you know, it, can it build suspense? It actually happens in my oh, opinion. Oh, I get quite a quite a bit actually because yeah. he he takes a sweet time in 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 approaching people. And uh, do you get some innovative kills? I do. I have quibbles with how they're accomplished. A, a few of them, but I think those are budgetary limitations. Not, I don't know how to make a movie limitations. Um, so I'll put that out there. And I for I when it ended, Becky said, "What did you think?" And I said, "I love that it committed to the bit." Yeah, I, I like I liked it. Um. I will say that I think as far as slasher movies from the killer's point of view, I, I think generally speaking, the remake of Maniac does it better because yes. you are you you are actually seeing it from his literal point of view. Right. Where you could where where here it's almost like a um documentary style where you're kind of following him around. Right, um, and that that was the aesthetic they were going for. They were going for a nature documentary that happens to include a rampaging killer. Right, and so as a few people have pointed out, it would be like it, it's you know it's, it's been described as if Terrence Malick directed a slasher movie. Yes, yeah. <laughs> and I think with the that's where the budgetary limitations kind of come in because if this had been in scope, right, instead of the sort of it's practically in four or three. I don't think it is. I think it's it's wider than that. But it's definitely not in in sort of a a sixteen by nine scope. I think it would have been better. But again, there's no mention online of what this film's actual budget is, and I have to believe it's under one million for sure. If not, maybe even half that. It's there's a there's a, a they're trying to work within the limitations that they have, and I feel like for the most part. They are very successful in giving and enveloping you in the woods that this is taking place in. Yeah. And and I mentioned this uh, when I did a, a very short write up of what I thought of it on Facebook that, you know, what makes it work is, you know, you, almost all the kills. Well, no, I just let me let me rephrase it. I should say the big one, the one people have been talking about the most. Yeah. And obviously we'll get to that. That is in broad daylight. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, it's not all, you know, skewed towards, you know, the middle of the night, pitch black, like a lot of particularly your, the, you know, the Friday the 13th movies are, yeah. you know, so you've got very much a, a balance between, you know, bucolic nature and like stark brutality. And yes. of course, you know, obviously, you know, this monologue that a, a woman who is, I'll, I'll, I'll point out, you, you probably already know who she is. I'm sure you looked it up on, you know, the cast on Wikipedia and all. The woman who picks up the final girl gives a speech about how you can't assume that that you know, you're you're bigger than you're you're stronger than nature. But yeah. she compared, but she compared it to a story about her brother being attacked by a bear. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's obviously you know the the point of the of the of the movie is you know when you're you know, you're out in nature, there's always going to be something you know bigger and stronger and more dangerous than you out there. Yeah. Oh my god, I didn't look it up. Holy yeah. shit. Yeah. She was in Friday the thirteenth part two. <laughs> yeah, she was uh the 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 gal who was uh uh Vicky, uh the the girl who was super horny for uh Mark, the guy in the wheelchair. Oh my god, what a great pull. Also, she was in Girls Night Out, a movie I refuse to cover on this show. I, <laughs> yeah, you said that was even too sleazy for us. Oh, it's 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 really not the sleaze factor. It is legitimately well, I suppose I just don't want to force you to watch it. It is um, so misogynistic um, to the point of parody that um, it's just not worth very much. It also features a killer who dresses up in a bear mascot costume, sticks knives through the paw and rarely kills anybody that way. Oh, man. <laughs> It's a lot of setup that it can't pay off. The best part of it, though, is this very homoerotic relationship between the two male leads where they're constantly doffing their tops and drinking together and eschewing the rest of the party that they're putting on. 
And you're like, okay, that's great. But what else is there to this movie? And it's like, um, misogyny, I think. Hopefully. <laughs> it's really, really, really unworth our time and attention. Um, because I just gave away the bit, like, how much fun can we make uh, uh, from, you know, 90 minutes of misogyny? I, I doubt. Yeah. I mean, after, after watching, um, well, okay. We, 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 you, a couple of days before we recorded this, we did a guest spot on, um, on uh, horror queers talking about the remake of the haunting. And we we're all, all four of us, uh, very, very angry. And and what was the, what was the one we did right before that? Uh, there was another one that neither of us liked. Uh, uh, cheerleader camp. Cheer, yes. Cheerleader camp. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, <laughs> It's yeah, been a real run. <laughs> yeah, I think I think we need to to you know we can only do like exhausting ones. You know, every 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 like once a once or once a month or so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I try to spread them out, um, and I try to vary them up. But uh, we did get caught in a whirlwind, and we weren't caught in an eighties trap either. Uh, it just happened to lay out that way. So yeah, I. I very much enjoyed the take here the yes. end, it is filled to the brim with reference points to Friday the 13th without mimicking it and without um, put, poking you in the face and going, see what I'm doing, see what I'm doing, see what I'm doing. It's a film first with a very defined idea of how it wants to present that information to you and presents it in a pretty damn good way overall. I, I think that, and I think there's also some gentle parody, uh, not parody, uh, satire, uh, mm -hmm. where I, to me, the vibe I got from this group of friends who is incorrectly described in Wikipedia as teenagers. <laughs> what is going on? Why do, why, why do fucking people do this? I, I don't think everyone that, I don't in think, a slasher movie is a teenager. I, I don't sakes. think the movie is, is trying to to put across the idea that they're teenagers. They're just young adult friends on a yes. camping trip together. But uh, you, I, I'm going I I'm going to keep tooting this horn. I don't think a lot of I don't think most of them like each other very much. Exactly. Yes. But and I, I you're I feel not that forced that very, to endure I, it for very long. Like that does not become the focus no. of it. They, I feel. They don't have I feel. To dream yeah. up of ways to illustrate how they don't like one another in order to elongate the movie in between kill scenes because the film isn't concerned with that. You get just enough of it that you can fill in all the blanks and you don't need that information in order for the film to happen. It is revolutionary in the way I'm sure what, why they chose to make it this way was to actually accomplish this type of feat um, right, it's right. innovative and interesting. Like you've got this one character, uh, uh, Aaron, who's the yeah. first, the first person killed on screen. Uh, and he's just like, I, I feel like someone's about to ask who the fuck brought this guy. <laughs> Cause like <laughs> everybody, everybody just keeps giving him shit. Like, like, like even the, even the, 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 the girls on the trip just keep like, like, like just needling just him. Needling him. And yeah. it, it, Starts to feel, you know, really unfriendly after a certain point. And it's like, I mean, everybody, every friends group, we, uh, everybody, I mean, we give each other shit, you know, it's like, but, you know, everybody also has a limit, like, okay, I'm not going to go there. That's me. Yeah. And you, you could kind of feel everybody sort of, you know, you know, nudging and like, and again, it kind of feels like someone brought him under duress. <laughs> but but you've also got you know a nice little modern twist you've got the couple who is super horny for each other but it's two girls yes yes i, I it is um a lovely examination by execution of the of, of the slasher genre um and they are able to juggle this stuff in such a way that it's new. It's not any the if you were to lay out the beats, there isn't a lot here that's uh, innovative from a pure plotting standpoint. It's the way the story is told that elevates the exercise overall. So it's a thumbs up for me. I'm assuming it's a thumbs up. Oh for yeah, you. I you know I I totally disagree with people who were derisively referring to, it. I mean, it's, it's, it's a clever insult, but I don't agree with it. Calling it, calling it slasher marink. 
<laughs> no, 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 Gina. This is not Skin and Marink. I'm no, sorry. No, and like people going in and saying, eh, nothing happens. It's like, no, quite a bit happens. There's just, you know, maybe some 10 minute long stretches where, where, you know, it's, it's this killer you wandering around the woods. And mm-hmm. it's like people that's called building tension. Yeah. And, and I, I, I am so, as someone who has ADHD, I am very sorry for, you know, your even more critical, you know, you know, version of it that you, you know, t- when 10 minutes passes a walk by where something happens, you, you dismiss it as nothing happens in the entire movie. Right. Uh, I would agree with you 100%. Um, I, I know this won't be every to everyone's taste. And I think that seems to be the theme of the year, right? <laughs> this oh yeah, isn't I mean for everyone's yeah, taste. Yeah, we're recording it the same re- same uh, um, weekend. Long Legs came out, yes. uh, a movie I liked very much, and and felt it lived up to my expectations. But of course, it's getting the usual measured. You know, this is the best horror movie of the year. This is the worst thing I've ever seen. Response online. Yes, we, I, I feel like the hype machine has something to do with with that. But I think it almost would have happened anyways. I just don't believe that Oz Perkins is the kind of filmmaker who's delivering four-quadrant horror <laughs> uh, with Micah Monroe <laughs> and this little indie outfit. That's not the goal. That's not the intention. And I would rather a movie come with a very specific point of view that not everyone's going to get and that might include me, rather than trying to please everyone. Because trying to please everyone often doesn't please anybody. Right, exactly. Uh, So let's get into the characters and specifics. And of course, um, we I, before we start, we'll start with the first dead body here, which is actually Johnny. And as you mentioned, um, he is buried in quotes um in, in a shallow grave in a broken down old fire tower um there's a pole sticking out of the ground with an with a uh, necklace on it with a small uh, gold amulet uh, and we just hear three voices debating you know what it means uh what went on there and eventually one of the of trio grabs the amulet and walks away and then the pole starts to shake and it turns out that our killer johnny not jason johnny gets up out of the grave and this has been stuck into his heart <laughs> the entire time and pinned him under the ground and the joy i had at this it is so deeply a friday the 13th you know, pastiche, but it, yeah, I enjoyed it so much. Yeah, well, you know, one thing that, that makes us stand out from a lot of other uh, slasher movies doing slasher pastiche is mm-hmm. I, I feel like that this filmmaker and uh, Chris Nash, I think his name is, um, you know, this is the rare one of these. You, you can tell he loves these movies. Yes. He is, he is not coming at this with the goal of... Um, deriding the material but like i love this and i'd like to do something like this but how can i do it in such a way that it's just not another one of these and he really succeeds oh yeah imdb's i tried to look up this film's budget and the numbers is just down (laughs) it just doesn't exist right now so things are going great imdb also not existing for me so we'll save that for another time uh but uh, I I don't know his his directorial background, but this was a you can tell that he enjoys this, is knowledgeable of it, and is trying to like here are things that I've seen obviously in Friday the Thirteenth. How can I how can I deliver them in an innovative way from the standpoint of I I don't want to leave this killer's POV for longer than a minute or two, and he really fucking succeeds. Yeah. Uh, I love that he just unburies himself. And then from the minute he gets up, uh, he's just got a, a torn undershirt and, and a flannel. He doesn't have a jacket, Gina. He does not this have a jacket. This killer doesn't need a jacket. Why? Because he's an undead mutant. He's a dirty peanut. 
for a reason. He's been buried for a he, while. He, he doesn't feel he doesn't feel cold. He doesn't feel cold because he's he doesn't dead. Feel cold. Yes. Um, uh, the other thing is because this is so on natural, the film can't afford to like have a rain sequence at the end or anything like that. So you just get him in the state that he is. Now, here is my main complaint of the film. And it really isn't of the film. It's of the visual effects. And it, this is entirely budgetary. Everything looks rubber. Everything. <laughs> I thought it looked pretty good for being for being low budget. I thought for, the, I thought the kills were decent. Uh, I. I mean, a okay, lot of the well, kills I, are I, decent, but some of them really suffer from rubber syndrome. I, I will say that the kill that everybody is talking about in yes. this, uh, what has been referred to as the yoga kill. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think it was more gruesome to think about than to actually see. Yes, I think it doesn't make sense the way it's portrayed. And that is a minor quibble for me. Again, everyone's coming at this via love. The I mean, love uh, is you, dripping off this movie. I mean, but. honestly, to, for me, the, the kill, I'm shocked nobody's talking about because I had me like cringing and looking away. Was uh, was the the Rangers de- the Rangers kill? Yeah, is because it just lingers there. But also, if you're going to set up, I mean, we'll get to it. <laughs> but if you're going to set up a log splitter, put the guy on the log splitter so that it actually splits him, not splits small sections of him. That's but that I feel like is the budgetary concern here. Yeah, they, they, they blew they they blew their budget on on uh, uh, Aaron's kill because that one is good. Yeah. Yes, uh, Aaron's kill is great, and but it is helped by the fact that it takes place in the middle of the night, and that is I you know you dream big and you try to make this happen, but yes, when you show a kill in as stark daylight as possible, like the Yoka kill. I think the end result of some of it is that the effects are just going to look more artificial because there's no shadow to hide behind. So that's the audaciousness of putting it out there. I applaud the end result for me is that how, why does he push the dull end of a hook through somebody's body? At least push the sharp end of the fucking hook through this woman's body, or show him punch his way through her middle. Yeah, I, I mean, we, we we've established that you know he's he's got you know dead guy strength. Yeah, <laughs> he's got undead mutant strength, absolutely. Um, and in the mask that Johnny is eventually revealed to have when he's fondling the toy car because Johnny loved toy Gina. <laughs> <laughs> Johnny really loved toy. Johnny loved toys. Yeah, we, again, we, we got, we've got, a, 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 take it, taking a giant page from Friday 13th. We have another, you know, <laughs> mentally disabled child who is, who is, yeah. you know, in this, you know, in, in this uh, case, we have a little bit of uh, Dark Knight of the Scarecrow. Yeah. Where, where, yeah. where he's uh, uh, harassed and terrorized by the locals and, and he's accidentally killed and, and, mm-hmm. and they have to cover up their, their, their misdeed. Yes. Whereas I feel like that's one of those things this film could have left behind. This person, the, the Johnny does not need to have special needs. And anyway, that is not inherent to the storytelling. I know they're trying to line it up to Jason Voorhees. Um, but that's, I, I don't know that it's super necessary because he's, at this point he's an undead mutant. Right. It, I know. mean, they, it's interesting. They, they don't explain too much of the lore, but they do, they do, you know, go to that reference point. Yeah. But at least they set it up with the idea of this basic death curse uh, scenario that we have been arguing for a long time that needs to be sort of, sort of formally included in a Friday the 13th, if they ever make one again. And I don't know that they will. Uh, and I'm okay with that. Yeah. Because if 
the end result of no one making a Friday the 13th is someone makes something like in a violent nature. I'm really more okay with that because there's no way horror Inc would let anyone do this to Friday the 13th. And that's a fucking shame because this was audacious in what it's attempting to do. Oh, totally. So let's talk about our first victim. Uh, We don't know his name, but we do know the moniker he loves the most. And that's number one motherfucker. <laughs> we don't know much about him. We know he's probably a Trump. Well, no, I guess he's Canada. In Canada, in Canada. He's, he's, he's not a Trump voter. He's definitely right wing. He's the worst person you've ever met. Uh, and that includes an undead dirty peanut that's running around slashing yeah, people to it's death. Yeah, inter- it's interesting that he kind of uh, pulls a punch and does not actually show his i mean we see that he gets caught in, a, in, a, in an animal trap you know yeah because because he deserves that because that's why the, the ranger is there uh, to to tell him to stop laying traps around the property yes um but i mean we we can tell by the fact that 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 you know johnny looks like he stuck his into, his arm up to the elbow in red paint that it wasn't anything good yeah <laughs> it is the one we're gonna shy away from telling you but when he passes by again you see that at least one arm has been torn off of him and his face has probably been pulverized by, by Johnny. And yes, he's warned by the ranger who will meet again that if he doesn't stop one of these days, something's going to walk through those traps and, and really do a number on him. And of course, number one motherfucker is under the belief that the ranger is threatening him personally when the ranger knows one day, it's entirely possible that Johnny's going to walk through that series of traps and fuck you up. Little does he know that's three minutes later. <laughs> the Rangers should play the lottery. The state of that home, Gina, is perhaps the grossest thing in this entire movie, which features multiple people getting chopped in half. Oh, sure. oh, absolutely. Yeah. It's disgusting. It's horrendous. And again, I, I can't help thinking that this is, again, a callback to um, the couple uh, who ran the um, the general Mama. store in part yeah. three. No, no, no. The, the, oh, the, the, part the, three. Yeah. And then, you know, Mama and Junior and just, you know, these gross denizens of, of rural towns. I mean, he yes. doesn't have a wife. That's, that's yeah. so that he, he appears to be living alone. But yeah. that's the only variation from it. Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify is there to help you grow. Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system. Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout. 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms and sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify magic, your AI powered all-star. What I love about Shopify is how no matter how big you want to grow, Shopify gives you everything you need to take control and take your business to the next level. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash westwood1. All lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash westwood1 now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash westwood1. <laughs> My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be. To be. So let's keep track of this for our own edification. Obviously, the broken down fire tower is a reference to Friday Part Two. Um, unfortunately, we don't get a toilet. No toilet. No toilet stinger. Uh, unfortunate. There are no stingers at all. There's That's yeah. There's the no. Thing. There's no score, which also yeah. makes this kind of eerie because all you're hearing is like nature sounds. And diegetic music you're hearing from other people who happen to be in the forest. Right. Um, so uh, number, number one motherfucker is that sort of gross townie 
of and harbinger kind of in one because the ranger acts as the harbinger. So there's now we're up to three. Then we get the campfire reveal of the backstory told by Aaron. Um, he's our storyteller. He's not a, we don't have a trickster, but he is the one everyone derides, you know, all the shit flows downhill to him. Uh, and he re- re- relates to the campfire group of John, Johnny's backstory for a stoner who doesn't have his own lighter. That tells me a lot. about him. <laughs> oh, when I say, when I say Aaron, um, you know, gets a lot of shit from the group, but you know, I'm not saying I feel sorry for him. No, no, he, he acts in a, in a man. He, again, this might be a Shelly version. Yeah. He's things. definitely, he's definitely a wiener. Yes. Where he's, you know, he's an attractive enough guy that he really shouldn't have a problem pulling girls. It's his attitude. That is the issue, which is the same problem with Shelly. Again, I love that we are bouncing off Friday the 13th this much without repeating things. It's variations on the theme. You're showing that you love it without needing to repeat it beat by beat to point at an audience and go, see, I'm giving you what you want. I'm giving you what you want. No, 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 no. You can give your interpretation of events in an artistic manner without just dead ass repeating elements from a movie in order to, to signal to the fandom. I get Friday the 13th too. Uh, anyone can do that. Yeah. Uh, we do it. <laughs> That's why we call the show kill by kill. Yeah. Exactly. Um, uh, the other problem I have with Aaron is the idea of getting high before taking a shit is just the worst idea I've ever heard of in my life. <laughs> I don't, I don't feel like that. That's a good use of your time. Also, Aaron, in you know, in our, in you, know, in our friends group, particularly friends groups that we were, you know, in the, in the blush of use in our early twenties, who mm-hmm. who takes any positive interaction, any semi positive interaction with a person of the opposite sex of you know they want me, I'm going to go ask them out. The, you know, we mm-hmm. we all we've all you know maybe some of us even been that person. But you know, basically, you know what the kids today call someone having no chill. <laughs> yeah. You know, Aaron. Ha- Aaron has zero chill. Um, he does have a nice T-shirt, and I look. There's so little information about this movie on the internet. Uh, his Hannaford Haven Rangers T-shirt. I don't know whether or not that is a direct reference to Jen Wexler's 2018 The Ranger slasher, but regardless. It made me think of that. Um, we should cover the Ranger one day. It's a fun little flick. But this is this is the best variation of that Friday the thirteenth part five behind the tree death I've seen Ooh. in a really long time. It, it is brutal and then <laughs> but also somewhat comical because he drags Aaron's body around with him. Johnny yes. b- drags and then essentially uses him like someone would use a brick to to uh, <laughs> to to smash a window to smash get into something. Window. I love the shot. Like like they go, they cut to the interior. I guess like the town hall or something. And, and it's the ranger station. Oh, it is the ranger it, station. It and is. also you hear like a crash, and it's like, oh, he threw a rock. Oh wait, no, he threw Aaron's body through the window. <laughs> To like basically break into the ranger station, and for some reason, I just kind of like hooted, like I didn't, I didn't expect that. Yeah, I mean, and Jason would have just walked through that door because, as we've well established, Jason Voorhees hates anything you can see through. He hates windows. He hates doors. But he takes that personally. Johnny's like, I don't want to deal with glass, and just throws a dead body. He hauls a dead body across a forest because he doesn't want to walk through a door um, and send a warning to the, we don't know this, but the ranger was the one who put him in the ground 10 years ago. And as a result, I think this is a dire warning to the ranger. Um, So there's that. You don't know that yet, but I I enjoyed that very, very much. Yeah. Um, So that is one of the things that Jason does not do. He does not warn you. No, <laughs> he, he just he just he just you know bamps into your cabin or behind you in the woods or whatever. Yes, but breaking through double doors, 
that that's a big Jason thing. I would have loved that from that behind of Johnny POV to have seen that, but uh, Hey, that's what sequels are for. Um, who's to know. So uh, then we get a lot of walking through the forest um, as he's wont to do uh, the next morning, uh, Brody and Aurora are down by the dock and Brody apparently is using this circumstance in a Friday the 13th part four to encourage one of the group to go skinny dipping, even though she has brought a swimsuit. And so I guess this is our final chapter skinny dipping sequence. Yeah. And then again, this is the couple. They're not a couple yet. Right. But they've had, they've hooked up in the past. Yeah. They, they are, they them. are extremely into each other, yes. but you know, the twist here is that it's two girls. Yes. Now I don't know. I don't know if I completely buy their dialogue. That kind of that kind of sounds a little bit like what a dude would fantasize to yes. <laughs> two women would be saying to each other. One gay person. Yeah, yeah. I, I kind of groaned a, a little bit. The whole I'm going to go stretch, and then why don't you come and stretch me some more? I'm like, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that sounds. I live a little, in a chapel roan world. Okay, yeah, you, you need to come with some real. I was going to say that sounds that sounds a little bit. You know, dear penthouse, I never dreamed this would happen to me. <laughs> Oh, God. Wow. Uh, that's a thought I have not thought in a really long time. Uh, Did I age myself with pornography? <laughs> yeah, it's it's a rare one. Very few people are able to age themselves via pornography. We've talked enough about uh, found porn in the woods, though, that we people would know by context clues that we're obviously... Uh, as one review noted uh, long ago, in our 60s. Uh, <laughs> We're not actually in our 60s. We are not in our 60s. <laughs> we are old enough, though, to to have had the cable set up where you, you can watch, like, like the Playboy channel in, like, in like 15-second increments. <laughs> yeah, to, to slightly unscramble it by holding the dial in between the channels. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's something I'll cop to. Um, <laughs> Well, I do enjoy this film's unabashed Canadianness. It doesn't really try to hide the Canada from everyone's intonations. You can tell everyone is Canadian throughout this, even though they don't point at Ontario as the location. Um, but Brody, the actress portraying Brody in particular, has a delightful Eastern Canadian accent that I really, really enjoyed. Uh, she's our resident rocker. Uh, <laughs> and yes, I too, I even wrote it down. It's like, I'll be at the, at the lookout if you want to stretch me out. Again, just run it past one queer person. That's, <laughs> um, it's like, yeah, this scene was written with one hand. But this is the sequence that I'm like, if I was on the fence, this is what gets me the Friday the 13th fan to just completely be on board. And it's not because it's gory. It's a very specific reference. And that is Friday the 13th, part eight, Jason takes Manhattan, which Jason walks along the floor of the Atlantic Ocean to New York City, something we have talked about a lot. Now, Johnny is not afraid of water. Because Johnny (laughs) is dead. Because Johnny is then also Jason, not afraid of water until someone decides to, why did you say Martha, the script for Jason versus Freddy versus Jason. <laughs> <laughs> like, as, like, anytime someone does that, it's a Martha. But he just, what I love about it is a predominantly unbroken shot of Johnny walking from the other side of this river down underneath the surface of the water there are no air bubbles an entire conversation takes place and then finally there are a there's a cut or two and then brody is pulled down from underneath by johnny and drowns and i kind of like, i kind of like that because to, to me it felt a little bit evocative of jaws yes because, because she you know, lets out a scream and it's pulled underwater and then you think it's over, you think it's over, and then she pops back up, and, and it's still, I mean, to, considering how everybody else dies, she, you know, drowning is pretty a pretty easy way out. But <laughs> but it is, I, I feel it's like Jaws in a lake, the way it's framed. Yes. I, th- I found this exhilarating. 
I'm like this absolutely sold me on it. No matter any opinion I have from now, now on, and, and I state they are minor quibbles because this is truly an excellent sequence. Um, the writing stuff, not, notwithstanding, I like this just sparked joy in me, Gina, you're right. Like it's, it's a Jaws, it's a Friday the 13th. It's just well executed, well timed, well paced, well shot. Um, it's everything I wanted the movie to be. And, um, it's not as showy as what's coming next, but to me, I don't think you even get the opportunity to be as showy as that without showing some restraint, which is what the previous two deaths are. They're exercises of restraint. Oh, yeah. So now we have Aurora. As mentioned, she's going to the lookout to do yoga and get stretched out. Um, (laughs) Aurora, I suppose, is meant to be our aggressively online person of the group as she is given many online buzzwords like or phrases like there is no such thing as cancel culture um she's not wrong Uh, she doesn't tell a single lie (laughs) let's put that out there but also it's one of those things where i think the film is signaling uh for a certain audience this is the person you dislike um which I uh, I don't know how I feel about, but also um, it's not like she's out of pocket in any of her statements. No. Um, and I find this kill interesting in concept, but very rubbery in execution probably because it's shot in stark daylight. And if you give a guy hooks, I want to see him use the hooks. And here... He uses the top of the hook to push his way through his spine. He practically, this is a get bunked using a person's own body as the thing the person is get bunked through. That being said, this death might be the most, well, I've had a good run that we've covered in a while. Yeah, she literally just kind of stick kind of stands there. Now, I, I get that, you know, she comes to the edge of a cliff, but also, you know, there are these two things called left and right. You, can, <laughs> you read my fucking mind, Gina. <laughs> you can go like, like she's just like, oh, Prometh- uh, she's like, oh, I have nowhere else to go. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like she it's a dead end. There is literally left or right that she can go for. And that's, but she just kind of stands there like, well, this might as well happen. And uh, I don't know how I I feel about that. She also retains a lot of strength to remain standing throughout most of this. But again, we're dealing with undead mutant killers here. Uh, I get it. All right, fine. I'm not coming to this for realism. But does this count as a get bunked is really what we need to discuss. Um, She is her own thing she's killed through. Yeah, that's true. I mean, I don't think she would have survived just having having her entire torso punched through. No, her eyes are still open. She's in shock. Like, she's definitely dying. I don't know how mentally she is there. And also, once you get pierced in the head by a giant hook, you're probably also not. Conscious. I would say it's, it's at minimum it is get bunked adjacent. It is get bunked adjacent. Uh, I didn't want to be too declarative. I like to run things by you. This is a, a, a rule by two uh, sort of situation. So I'm glad that I didn't make any sort of declaration beforehand. But uh, it's I I I like the idea of it. But again, why? Why the dull side of the hook that I don't quite get? I, the, then, like, this is ruining what should be a good time for me. And again, it doesn't need to. It didn't really ruin it. Mm, I'm being dork. It's, it's, a, it's a quibble. It's a quibble. All right. So now, um, after this, we, we get a lot of beautiful nature footage. We also uh, are getting the sort of green hell that is being out in the middle of the forest with nothing else around where it's constantly yapping at you, Gina, Jesus fucking Christ. We get it. You're a bird. (laughs) (laughs) 
<laughs> it's, it's a gorgeous looking forth. And again, after so many Friday the 13th movies where they dragged it to California so you could have no greenery, it is nice to see tons of greenery. And there's some just really nice shots here. Oh, yeah. Let's say it, it absolutely establishes, you know, yes, you can you can enjoy and behold the beauty of nature, mm-hmm. but you understand that you are not alone out there. Yeah. Yeah, so, so some, something something is 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 bigger and more dangerous than you you are the prey for something out there yes uh and that is a really interesting concept and you can just take that further in the sense that you are, you know can live your life unaware of danger when it comes to things minor major and minor but you do have to have some level of awareness and Johnny is not a bamfer. He's not teleporting from place to place. He's walking by stuff. And I, I do love that we finally get a payoff of this. Like someone fucking notices. And I have to assume that this is also a part six reference when Evan views uh, Johnny after he places a, a, a stick inside of someone's car so the horn is blaring constantly and then walks all the way around the house unaware that evan is actually by a window and sees him walk by and the look he gives him is worth the price of admission alone (laughs) oh yeah like he takes his sweet time and and he does and i think that's you know the problem that people who didn't like this movie have and it's like yeah and, and i can't emphasize enough and, and again i i feel like this is a lot of people's problems with long legs is that you know it, it's called atmosphere people it's called <laughs> tension yeah. you know i mean i don't i don't want to watch a, 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 you evidently this makes me a bad horror fan but i don't want to watch a movie that's just a bunch of kills and nothing else and there are films for those people, but I don't believe every film should that, nor do I believe that every film should be long legs or in a violent nature. I, I like the variety. Yeah. I mean, it's just, uh, you know, you know, th- there is a, you know, an audience at a place for movies like Terrifier 2. And, yes. But that kind of thing just does not interest me. It's the reason why I haven't scheduled them on the show. I mean, we would get a nice hit in terms of audience and everything. But I don't I don't want to complain about people's good faith efforts. I want to complain about people's shitty efforts like cheerleader camp <laughs> or the haunting. Exactly. I, I don't believe those efforts were in good faith. I think they were on one side exploitative and on the other full of hubris that you could make a horror movie that would scare people to death and have no idea how to build tension. Well, that comes down here. You bring back to what I was an earlier point I made about, you know, violent nature is those two mm-hmm. movies were made by people who don't like slasher or don't like horror movies. Whereas yeah. this one is, I had one thing I'd like to bring up is, um, and I think uh, this was discussed in the page that Nathan Rabin runs about how Paul Schrader, uh, is not a fan of horror movies mm. and and generally considers the horror genre, you know, to be the, the lowest of the low. Yeah. And he talks about filmmakers like like T West and Oz Perkins as as if, you know, isn't it a shame that their their talents and and you know obvious creative filmmaking eye are quote unquote wasted <laughs> making horror movies. Like, like, yeah, like that. I as yes, it suggests that either of them are being held at gunpoint and forced to make horror movies. Right. When it is very obvious that this is a genre that both of them genuinely love. Yeah, and I might add, the man is 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 not exactly innocent here, as he has made two horror movies, and one of them may have been made at gunpoint in his Exorcist prequel, but. Uh, man, you wanted to explore your weird sex fetishes and cat people, and we all let you, all right? Shut the fuck up. <laughs> Honestly, it's not that he has to like them. That's fine. But he's not innocent here. He's not above it. I am sick to death of hearing about his... Honestly, he hates women 
and he hates sexuality and he hates genre in a lot of respects. And that's fine. You don't have to make those movies. And you haven't made those movies over the course of your career with two fucking exceptions. So seriously, fucking keep it. I I found that irritating to no end that you made can't people. And now you're going to lecture me about someone making a fucking horror movie. Get the fuck out of here. <laughs> and again, I like cat people. I do too. <laughs> That's what makes it even more irritating, Gina. <laughs> you know, he he has the capacity to make a decent horror movie, but for some reason, he thinks of it as like you know he's he's above it. Yes, it, he was above it until he was offered a paycheck and, and like and like and like you know paycheck. treating it like you know isn't it a pity? It's like, dude, do you know how much you know a money maker horror is? Yes, like the horror has funded a lot of the movies that you had the privilege to make. So, like, keep it with that shit. Well, like, he's so highfalutin. He's so above it all. It's just, the it is the hypocrisy of it all that I find most irritating about yeah, that particular exactly. scenario. Exactly. And, and also acting like Ty West has not had the opportunity or desire to make non-genre work which he has done. But also what you cannot level at Ty West is that here's a guy who just delivers the same type of of horror movie every single time. Even within the X trilogy, he's doing three types of horror movie. So fuck off. It's fine that it's not your thing, but when you come at it from that angle where it, oh, pity poor Ty West, He's caught in the horror ghetto. First of all, fuck you. And second of all, oh, let me go through the file. Fuck you. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you know, having seen both Maxine and, and uh, Long Legs, I don't get the impression that either of these filmmakers are making these movies under duress. No, these are movies they wanted to make. They have things they want to say through them. And while I haven't seen Long Legs, it's Saturday. <laughs> it just came out. There are there are some horror movies that come out that are obvious studio product, and they haven't done tremendous this year. I think to date, Night Swim is still the highest grossing horror movie so far. No shit, really. Oh, Jesus I still haven't seen it. I don't know. Like I, I long lakes. I mean, I I went to a uh, an eleven a.m. show yesterday. And mm-hmm. that theater was was well attended. Yeah. Even the fact that Maxine made nearly $7 million in its first weekend is something. Like, obviously, what I think we're getting a little bit more of this year is a lot of smaller independent fare. But, of course, it's not as expensive as a gigantic, you know, studio horror picture. So... <laughs> Shopify is the global commerce platform that helps you sell at every stage of your business. Shopify is there to help you grow. Shopify helps you sell everywhere from their all-in-one e-commerce platform to their in-person POS system. Shopify's got you covered. Shopify helps you turn browsers into buyers with the internet's best converting checkout, 36% better on average compared to other leading commerce platforms and sell more with less effort thanks to Shopify Magic, your AI-powered all-star. What I love about Shopify is how no matter how big you want to grow, Shopify gives you everything you need to take control and take your business to the next level. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is the global force behind Allbirds, Rothy's, and Brooklinen, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across 175 countries. Plus, Shopify's award-winning help is there to support your success every step of the way. Because businesses that grow, grow with Shopify. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash westwood1. All lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash westwood1 now to grow your business, no matter what stage you're in. Shopify.com slash westwood1. My dad works in B2B marketing. He came by my school for career day and said he was a big ROAS man. Then he told everyone how much he loved calculating his return on ad spend. My friends still laugh at me to this day. Not everyone gets B2B, but with LinkedIn, you'll be able to reach people who do. Get a $100 credit on your next ad campaign. Go to linkedin.com slash results to claim your credit. That's linkedin.com slash results. Terms and conditions apply. LinkedIn, the place to be, to be. Anyways, let's get to Evan, a person I don't have a lot of complaints about. Because while Evan doesn't strike me as the sharpest tool, 
He is at the very least helpful to people who don't deserve help because Troy does. I the Troy's the fucking reason all this is happening. Yes. No one knows that yet, but it's true. And Evan's like, Oh, you got slashed in the leg. I'm going to try and help you. And what does he get for all that fucking trouble? A hatchet to the back of his fucking head. Yep. So we don't know much about Evan and we don't need to know much. No, Evan Evan is just what we know about Evan is he is the kind of guy who will just, you know, find a necklace hanging from a rusty metal pipe and and think those up. This would make a good gift for my girlfriend. Well, that's that. That is Troy. Evan is the guy who's like, I don't think that's a good idea. And then Aaron's the one who brings up the fact that that a slaughter, the white plane slaughter happened here. So Troy is the one who picks up the necklace. Oh, okay. Evan okay. is like at best neutral, but mainly like that doesn't sound like a great idea. Leave it here. And he doesn't, of course. And he doesn't. And you know what? What does everyone get for their trouble? Uh, Evan gets a hatchet to the back of the head. That hatchet looks heavy, by the way. That does. I, I've heard it referred to as a as a hatchet and an axe. It's somewhere in between because it's not a long handle and that's how i primarily view axes but then again there was this was like a logging camp thing i don't know it's yeah that thing wild. looked rusty as shit too and you know you know yeah. if he if, if, if he survived that thing he was going to get such an infection <laughs> really truly you don't want to be grazed with it no um troy meanwhile is one of the most aggressive assholes ever to darken our doorstep <laughs> oh yeah and, as- and again i feel like it is deliberate to to yes you know, make these characters cut kind of awful, you know, in, in a believably sort of way, in a believable sort of way, but you know, you know, awful nonetheless. Um, he in one of the big criticisms he he levels at Colt, um, is a character we haven't discussed is that I'm you know, your dad died. Why are you so sad? Like because his dad his dad died. <laughs> <laughs> people are allowed to be fucking sad but also like why is he he's bringing down the vibes of this place you're bringing down the vibes of the place you're the one being the asshole uh he can't see that so you know uh when he dies i i did not weep um his skull is basically atomized by oh, a yeah. large rock yeah i think it's the one bit of digital trickery in the entire movie. Um, and it looks great. Yeah. Yeah. So I was going to say, so it looks pretty good to me. Yeah. Um, so uh, next we have the Ranger who we learn um, from afar. My father stopped this once. I stopped this once. And that's all the rampage backstory I need. This isn't the first in a violent nature in, in a way we're, finding this in the middle of the non-existent franchise. And that, again, is something interesting to me, that I've not seen all the adventures of Johnny. I'm really okay with that. Yeah, yeah. Um, Undoubtedly, if this makes enough, and I I have to assume this was made for well under a million dollars, so it's already in the black from its first weekend on. Um, So I don't, but then again, I don't know if this is, what I want to see over and over again. I would like to see what else this guy has in his bag of tricks. Yeah, no, I don't, I don't, I, I don't need to, you know, yeah, I don't need to see the continuing adventures of Johnny. Um, I blame Colt for what happens next because he's asked to do a very simple thing. Go to that barn, get some fucking chains. We're tying this asshole up. And then when he finally brings back the chains, he's like, I can't do it. Fuck you, Colt. Get out of it. Now, now, now I'm on Troy's side. This is the one time I get on Troy's side. Colt is ruining the vibes here. And the vibes are restrain the undead mutant killer. <laughs> uh, you know, at least Tommy Jarvis hustled. Yeah, you know did. what I mean? Yeah. Um, Colt will later attempt Tommy Jarvis. Turns out he is. Not, we should put respect on Tommy Jarvis's name. <laughs> Because he it's not only stops Jason once but twice by action, god damn it. Um, but I also blame the Ranger because you do not get in a gun wrestling match with Johnny. That's not gonna go well for you. Yeah. Uh Johnny has sausage fingers. 
Yeah, he's Bills a he's some, a, he, he's a big boy. He's a big big boy. Um, I love his battle damage. <laughs> I love that they show his battle damage. This has happened over and over and over again. <laughs> For whatever reason, his torso is black. And there's just like a purple black, like a dead, like a dead body purple black, but his head isn't. Yeah, and he's got Why? a little. He's got a little bit of classic, like like you know, backwards mutant thing going on. Yeah. And 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 the mask that's used here for his I wouldn't even call it makeup. It really feels like a full head mask. Because when they do show it, you're like, ooh, um, mm, I'm getting some, you know, <laughs> I I'm getting some fun house vibes here. Where yeah. if that was makeup and it moved, it'd probably be a little bit better. But then again, they're they're this is not a high budget affair. So we're getting what we get. Yeah, and, and I, I I also, you know, wonder, and I wondered this, you know, well, okay, not when I originally watched the original Friday the 13th because I was a child, but but mm-hmm. later it's like, why is, you know, mentally challenged or uh, or developmentally disabled equated with, you know, having a big Friday guy or having like, uh, uh, you know, you know, horrible snaggled teeth and stuff like that. Right. It's yeah. like, like most, most all of that could have been battle damage. That's the other thing. That's, like, that's I, true. That that's true. Yeah. But I, I don't. Gonna, but I was going to say, developmentally disabled d- does not equal mutant. You know? Yes, <laughs> like, that is the thing. It, and the other thing is like, it if that is like damage to his face from having fallen off from a great height from the fire tower to the ground, that would make a lot more sense. It's just like. One more thing. I get the idea of evoking Jason, but also you could correct this a little bit, right? There's a lot of corrective things happening in this in terms of trying to do a Friday the 13th without falling into the same traps. And this is like one trap you fall into, and I really don't find it necessary. He doesn't need to vocalize. Michael doesn't fucking vocalize. Like, there's a lot of things you you just don't fucking need. And that's one of the things I don't need in Johnny. It wasn't necessary. It doesn't make the story better. It doesn't make it more believable or natural or anything akin to that. He could just be the one kid who was kind of hulking and everyone's kind of intimidated, but they all hate him because his dad owns the company store. That works for me. Yeah. You don't have to make, you don't have to make him a monster. Right. He becomes a monster. Right. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> the, the, the fact that there's a death curse attached to him makes him a monster. Um, so, yeah. Uh, Colt, uh, he says all the right things. He mostly responds like he should. And he dreams up a plan to vanquish evil. The problem is he's a big dummy. <laughs> and he apparently uh, Johnny can hear Colt and Chris whispering to one another quite plainly he understands the plan because their whispering is so loud he's nowhere near them and he can still hear it and so colt's like i'm going to distract him and then he ends up getting his head chopped for five minutes oh my god this goes on so long (laughs) it becomes like a like a like a family guy joke where like (laughs) It goes on so long, it stops being funny and then starts being funny again. <laughs> I have to assume that the, and this is a leap here, for, I'm assuming this, that this is a reference to the endless J- Jason beats the woman inside the sleeping bag that you can find on YouTube, where it's just like Jason beats a woman in the, inside of the sleeping bag for five hours. And it's just it repeated, <laughs> repeated, repeated, repeated. <laughs> But yeah, this is almost comical because like like stuff is happening. Like you could see like you know the other characters try and you can still hear thump thunk thunk. Yes. <laughs> which which brings up an interesting question because I think that Chris sequence again is another reason why you go see this movie. When she is running in the fucking dark, A Bravo. I'd love to see a horror movie that's actually in the dark. B That is really taking your life in your hands, running through a forest at full speed in the dark. It is an incredible sequence. Like I was like stunned at how good it was. 
she goes through waves of fear, bewilderment, exhaustion, numbness. You get every level of this. And then I check the time and there's 19 minutes left. I'm like, if I see this woman run in the woods for 19 minutes, this I'm going to stand and clap like I'm at the fucking con film festival for 19 minutes. Yeah. Uh, yeah and part of it is also, oh, this is going to piss people off. And I love it. Uh, yes. At this point, I'm in on the gag. It's working for me. <laughs> they are actively trying to do this shit. I just enjoy the living hell out of it. Um, but we don't get that. Uh, she somehow stumbled into a giant wood stake in her leg. I don't know how that happens. She could just twist a fucking ankle, but I guess she has to be bleeding for the other thing, for the conversation she has with, quote unquote, the woman um, that Gina noted uh, is an actress from Friday the 13th Part 2 uh, who perfumed her crotch. Uh, I might add. And, and decided she was going to that put on some lingerie, which consists of a pair of brown panties. Brown panties and her fuck sweater. Um, <laughs> again, I, I, didn't the, think, I didn't think they even made panties in brown. I, well, apparently they did uh, with some lovely stitching and a flower on top that she's like, hmm, perfume on my nether regions? That contains alcohol. That can't be good. Um, but it is the forest. I, I kind of get it that you've been sweaty. Take a shower. Uh, you're also going to be walking in the rain. There's a lot fucking going on in that movie. But again, the reason why we started the podcast, because you can endlessly question the motivations of Friday the 13th characters until the cows come home. We did it for two and a half years. <laughs> It, it, I can still do it. That's the wild thing. There's always it's, something. There's always something to say about them. Truly, there is. Um, but basically, the the story goes like, hey, as Gina noted, like the out there in the wilderness, it is the wild. You are you. No matter how modern things are around you, you can come across something that is wilder than your imagination. And if you come out the other side of it, just be glad you lived. And <laughs> I don't know how she takes it, but that sequence in which she's applying a, a tourniquet to Chris and Chris is just looking into the forest uh, thinking any second now, any second now, any second now. But luckily for Chris, she was smart enough to leave the locket behind as Colt was being hatcheted to death. Um, and we have to assume because we are given a shot where the locket disappears from that gas can that Johnny has taken the locket. and go, all right, time, time for to go to bed. I was going to say, does that I mean, does that imply that he just kind of goes back to his rest or does somebody have to rebury him? I think, I don't know that someone has to rebury him for all we know. He goes back to that spot and pulls dirt over him. Like, Time for it to go to bed. <laughs> like, that, that's he the doesn't John, want to get up. Johnny's had a long day. Vengeance. Yeah, this has been a lot. This is a lot of activity for a guy who's been dead for 10 years since the last time he went on a rampage. He needs the rest up. Um, I enjoyed the fuck out of this movie. I did. I, you know, like, like I, I, I enjoyed the, uh, you know, some people may accuse the the woman's speech about her brother getting attacked by a bear as sort of explaining the point of the movie. Mm -hmm. But but you know, also I I I think you're going to see a, if, if you look it up online, you're probably going to see you know, in a violent nature ending explained video. <laughs> so <Yeah. laughs> clearly, clearly people need this. I, I I liked I liked that there was to me at least there was a lot of suspense over whether or not this woman could be trusted. You yes. know, and and but it turned out she could be. She she actually yeah. you know did want to help her and presumably drove her to safety. But we're so devoid of plot mechanics that I think the a person's brain is going like, "What's the next shoe to drop? What's the next shoe right?" To or drop? that she would be like, you know, helping her, and then like you know, Johnny comes up and twists her head off or something like that. Yes. You know, I mean, we're waiting for the Friday the Thirteenth Carrie jump scare. Um, and the movie just holds off on it. It just quiet, again, it, it quietly, it, it kind of quietly winds down. It's very, it's yes. very interesting. I I think this is a really interesting movie, and the the plot structure and the way it's filmed works for me. And I can understand 
that it would not work for everyone. But what I wouldn't have given to go into this entirely blind. I yeah, would have loved yeah. That. I, you know, and again, it, it it is meta, but not in a in a smug way. You know what I mean? Yes. I, I again, this very much feels like it was made by somebody who genuinely loves these kinds of movies. There's not you know you know, out to make fun of them or to, or you know, under the impression that it's easy to make one of these, you know, did this feel made with love? Yes. And certainly there have been films and I was struggling to come up with the, the name of it, but I, um, on YouTube, uh, water cooler, uh, the guy who runs that site and, uh, and for like seven or eight years done this 30 horror films in 30 days. And one of them but had been like a Friday the 13th cheapy that has a ton of real nature footage in it. And it, to the point where it's like an Altman movie, like all the dialogue is people talking over one another around the campfire and this shooting random forest footage because there's not enough movie there. This is not something someone does because it's easy. No, this was hard. No, and, and, and I think and I think he, you know, he, you know, as you say, the, the limited budget does show, mm -hmm. but at the same time, I think that they really did do the best they could with what they had. Absolutely, they're trying to make the best movie they can, and again, really commit to the bit that they start with. And I think it, it for me, it pays off. In total, like I really enjoyed all the zags to the normal zigs you would get with this type of film. It shows you that all it takes is one good idea and a lot of hard work by a lot of people to make this come off. And, and for me, um, this for me it, it is pretty fucking exciting. Like this is top five for me so far this year. Yeah, and again, we we're still we're still doing good on horror. We're I mean, only halfway. I mean, the the you know, I, I do think that the you know it's going to start drying up within the next year or so. Mm -hmm. But uh, you know, hopefully, you know, it'll be you know a time for indie more indie horror filmmakers to rise. You know, and work on a you know crowdfunded budget. You know, you've got like Vera Drews, and you have uh, you know other filmmakers who have a very interesting you know point of view and are you know seeking to to make a name of themselves outside the studio system so you know i i hope that this will continue to be their time to shine while while yeah. you know major studios you know struggle and decide well you know what why don't we bring back michael myers right yeah and i found this much more exhilarating overall than that new uh, halloween dream, even oh, though it started 100, off on a good foot 100 percent, 100 percent. this just is trying to do something and for the most part, really nailing it for me. Um, so uh, it's a large thumbs up. But of course, Gina, uh, we can't uh, lay ourselves to rest with our lockets, um, with, the, with our mommy lockets, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. unless we choose your own death venture. And that's where we decide of the deaths. In this film, if you were forced to die in one of those ways, well, which one would you choose and why? We have leg caught in a bear trap, arm torn off, beaten to death, question mark. Um, decapitated from the mouth up. Uh, drowned. Uh, hook pushed through stomach, head hooked, pulled through the back uh, of the hole that was in your your tum-tum in a, in a get bunked adjacent death. Um a hatchet thrown through the back of the skull, skull atomized by a large rock, lower spine crushed, hooked, dragged, arm and head severed by log splitter, oh. and then head decimated by repeated axe blows for what feels like a fucking eternity. Uh, Gina, what's I, you? I, I, I have a cringe at a, at a, at a, uh, a kill. Well, that's not entirely true. Long legs had something that made me cringe, but I won't give it away. Um, mm -hmm. Uh, that ranger's death really got to me because you know the I mean, yeah he was paralyzed uh, because I I believe he broke his back uh, yes but like he was conscious enough that he knew it was happening to him yes. and and I can't think of anything more horrifying than 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 that so mm -hmm. that's that's a big no for me. Um, <laughs> You know, I was I, I was originally going to say that the drowning deaths was what I would have picked because, you know, 
that is probably the quickest and the least gory. But you know what? You just have someone throw an axe in the back of my head. Like, like, you know, that that was probably, you know, good night, Irene, right away. Right. He, that guy is there one second and gone the next. He and is, he doesn't it, even really he doesn't even really know what what happens to him because it comes from the back of his head. Right. It's basically the same thing as having your skull atomized by a large rock. Yeah, but he but saw that coming. Troy though. sees it coming. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm with you. It's it's the one you got to go with. Uh, everything else, it's, just, everything else is very prolonged, and I'm just like, mm, yes, mm, no, not not for me. Thank you. So that just about does it, everyone. We have we've recorded the commentary that will be coming up. I believe so. Yes, the being yes, 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 yes. Although it was filmed in 1980, <laughs> the, the being is a first time watch for Gina, and boy, does she enjoy it. Uh, you will too. Yeah, uh, it's something. It is something. And it's not necessarily a movie you would want to watch without someone guiding you along the way. So uh, it is worth your time and attention. It is free almost everywhere. <laughs> you might have to pause the podcast during commercials, but like it exists out there. Um, and uh, the being is delightfully incompetent in every single way. Uh we anticipate being the uh, head of the Mortimer Lutz uh, cult fandom club. That will undoubtedly happen as a result. Absolutely. Of our commentary about it. Uh, that's the being coming up here at the end of the month. Thanks, everybody. Uh, until next time, the body count will continue. Bye-bye. Bye. Hear that? That's what cooked when you order juicy beef sounds like. The steaming hug of two slices of melted cheese, the crunch of tangy pickles and sliced onions, all topped with a toasted sesame seed bun. That's the sound of a McDonald's quarter pounder with cheese. Fresh beef at participating U.S. McDonald's. Excludes Alaska, Hawaii, and U.S. territories.